Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here with SCP-49, also known as the Plague Doctor. Item number, SCP-49, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-49 is contained within a standard secure humanoid containment cell in Research Section Sector 02 at Site-19. SCP-49 must be sedated before any attempts to transport it. During transport, SCP-49 must be secured within a Class 3 humanoid restriction harness, including a locking collar and extension and restraints, monitored by, monitored by no fewer than two armed guards. While SCP-49 is generally cooperative with most nation personnel, outbursts or sudden changes in behavior are to be met with elevated force. Under no circumstances should any personnel come into con direct contact with SP-49 with the Arrhenius Alphars. In the event SP-49 becomes aggressive, the application of Lavender has been shown to produce a calming defect act on, the entity, on the entity. Once calmed, SP-49 generally becomes compliant and will return to containment with little resistance. In order to facilitate the ongoing containment of SCP-49, the entity is provided with the corpse of a recently deceased animal, typically a bovine or other large mammal, once every two weeks for study. Corpses that have become instances of SCP-492 are to be removed from SCP-49's containment cell and incinerated. SCP-49 is no longer permitted to interact with human subjects, and requests for human subjects are to be denied. Temporary containment procedure update. See addendum 49.3. Per containment committee order, SV49 is no longer permitted to direct, interact directly with any members of Foundation staff, nor is it to be provided with any additional corpses to be used in its surgeries. This order shall persist indefinitely until such time a consensus regarding the ongoing containment of SCP-49 can be reached. Description: SCP-49 is a humanoid entity, roughly 19 meters in height. Wait, no, roughly 1.9 meters in height. That makes way more sense. Which bears the appearance of a medieval plague doctor. While SCP-49 appears to be wearing the thick robes and ceramic mask indicative of that profession, the garments instead seem to have grown out of SCP-49's body over time. The robes and gloves are identical to a thick hide built up on the skin, while the mask is composed of a kind of chitin growing out of the bones in the face, and are now indistinguishable from whatever performance we need them. X-rays indicate that despite this, SCP-49 does have a humanoid skeletal structure beneath its outer, outer layer. And here's the X-ray of SCP-49 if you want to look at that. SCP-49 is capable of speech in a variety of languages, though it tends to prefer English or Medieval French. Then he claims to have originated in 15th century, century France, though admits that it is particularly well-traveled. While SCP-49 is generally cordial and cooperative with Foundation staff, it can become especially irritated or at Times outright aggressive and feels that in the, is in the presence of what calls the pestilence. All the exact nature of the pestilence is currently unknown. Known to Foundation researchers, it does seem to be an issue of immense concern to SV49. SV49 will become hostile with individuals it sees as being affected by the pestilence, often having to be restrained should encounter such. If left unchecked, SV49 will generally attempt to kill any such individual. SV-49 is capable of causing all biological functions of an organism to cease through direct skin contact. How this occurs is currently unknown, and autopsies of SV-49's victims have invariably been inconclusive. SV-49 has expressed frustration or remorse after these killings, indicating that they, they have done little to kill the pestilence that will usually seek to then perform a crude surgery on the course but using the implements contained within a black doctor's bag it carries on it at all times. 
The space within this bag is seemingly anomalously large, as SCP-49 has been observed putting objects larger than the bag itself from within it in order to operate on deceased subjects. While these surgeries are not always successful, they often result in the creation of SCP of instances of SCP-492. SCP-492 instances are reanimated corpses that have been operated on by SCP-49. These instances do not seem to retain any of their prior memories or mental functions, having only basic motor skills and response mechanisms. While these instances are generally inactive, moving very little in a generally ambulatory fashion, they can become extremely aggressive if provoked or if directed by SV-49. SV-49-2 instances express active biological functions, though so these are vastly different from what from currently understood human in physiology. Despite these alterations, SV-49 often remarks that the subjects have been cured. Addendum 49-1 Discovery SCP-49 was discovered during the investigation of a series of unknown disappearances in the town of Montauban in southern France. During a raid on a local home, investigators found several instances of SCP-492 as well as SCP-49, while law enforcement personnel engaged in hostile SCP-492 instances, SCP-49 was known as watching the engagement and taking notes in its journal. After all of the SCP-49 in 92 instances were dispatched, SV-49 willingly entered Al Nation custody. The following interview was conducted by Dr. Raymond M. during the initial investigation. We can't listen to it because I don't want to get copyright struck, so I'll be reading it out loud. Though I don't know French. Interviewer, Dr. Raymond M. Ham, Site 85. Interviewee, SCP-49. In French? So then, how should we begin an introduction? I still need to do that myself. Is that French? Can we get a translator? The King's English. None for translation, sir. I can speak it well enough. Good. My name is Dr. Raymond Ham, and I... Ah, a doctor. I like my individual, no doubt. Wherein is your specialty, sir? Cryptobiology. Why? <laughs> a medical man, such as myself, wanders around, and he er, I worried that I had been abducted by common street thugs. This place, then, this is your laboratory? I had wondered, as clean as it is, and with such little trace of the pestilence here. The pestilence? What do you mean? The scourge, the great dying. Come now, you know the, uh... What does they call it? The... The... Uh, no matter. Pestilence, yes. It abounds outside these walls, you know. So many have succumbed and many more will continue to until such time as a perfect cure can be developed. Fortunately, I am very close. It is my duty in life to rid the world of it, you see. The cure to end all cures. When you say the Great Dying, are you talking about the bubonic plague? I don't know what that is. I see. Right. Well, the entities our agents in Karen House, they were dead when you encountered them, yes? And you reanimated them? Hmm. In a matter of speaking, you see things too oh, simply, Doctor. Expand your horizons. Life and death, sickness and health. These are amateur terms for amateur physicians. There's only one element that exists in the world of men, and that is the pestilence, and nothing else. Make no mistake. They were very ill, all of them. You think you cure those people? Indeed. My cure is most effective. The things we recovered were not human. Yes, well, it is not a perfect cure, but that will come with time and further experimentation. I spent a lifetime developing my methods, Dr. Ham, and will spend a lifetime more, if necessary. Now, ha uh, now we have wasted uh, too much time. There is work to do. I will require a laboratory of my own. One where I can continue my research unimpeded. Assistance, of course. Though I can provide those of my own in time. <laughs> I don't think our organization, organization will be uh, willing to... Nonsense! We are men of, of science! 
Fetch your coat and show me to my quarters, doctor. Just was point stick. Our work begins now. End log. Interviewer's note. While SCP-49 is capable of communicating in a very human way, there's a strange sense of unease that one experiences when it's in, when it, in its presence. Make no, no mistake. There's something very uncanny about this entity, indeed. Additionally, we've confiscated that point stick that SP-49 keeps waving Even around. Part of this was due to certain raid confisc confiscation protocols for the possession of anomalies, and part because as for a nine is a menace swinging it around like he does. The entity was displayed at, at first, but after we made some concessions in providing it with test subjects, which are immediately more for the development of our own research, I warmed up to the idea. Addendum 49-2 Observation Log <sighs> While in containment at Site-19, SV-49 has spent a considerable amount of time studying and performing surgery on the various mammalian corpses it has been provided. SV-49 will routinely spend and several days performing surgery, and then, regardless of whether or not the corpse becomes an instance of SCP-492, spends several more days documenting its findings in a thick letter or journal stored with it in its doctor's bag. SV-49 will often seek to share its findings with members of the Foundation staff. <sighs> the following is a log of several occasions during which SV-49 was observed operating on a mammalian corpse. Observation and Log 1 Summary Subject, SCP-49 Briefest, a test subject, D85123, I'm going to call him Bob now, was introduced into SV-49's containment cell. The entity expressed sincere gratitude towards all members of the containment and research staff. Observation and notes. SV-49 SV began and by asking Bob several standard medical questions as it begins removing tools from its bag. Shortly after finishing its preparations, SCP-49 quickly closes its between the two, killing a subject with a touch to its throat. Afterward, SCP-49 made a number of considerable alterations to the basic structure of the subject's corpse, often introducing fluids from within its bag into the subject in a way of a, a hand-powered pump and upper tubing. The resulting SCP-49-2 substance became animated, flailing and grasping at the walls of the chamber with a number of Manufactured limbs while moaning out of an oblong orifice now present in its sternum. During this time, SC49 was observed taking notes of the instance in its journal, Remark and remarking to the watching research staff about the efficacy of its cure. Scary personnel entered the chamber to move SC49 back to containment and were attacked by the instance. A security team dispatched the 492 instance and SC49 returned to the it would contain with no resistance, saying that I was pleased with the results. Observation Log 49-2. I'm not saying LL because it's kind of obvious what we're talking about here. Subject, SV-49. Preface, SV-49 was provided the corpse of a recently deceased his goat. SV-49 expressed gratitude at the front of vision. Observation Notes SC-49 operated on the goat corpse for several days, eventually resulting in the instance of SC-492. SC-49 expressed pleasure in its outcome, though admittedly, the disease was still in its nascent age. My veterinary practice is rudimentary, but the patient responded well to the procedure. Observation Log 49.3 SV-49 is subject, preface, SV-49 was provided the corpse of recently deceased orangutan. SV-49 expressed no gratitude and the profession due to similarities between orangutan and, and common human in physiology. Observation notes, SV-49 spent several days operating on the orangutan, reanimating it several times. However, SV-49 appeared to be discontent with the results it experienced. 
return to the creature three times after its initial reanimation for additional work. Although I was unable to reanimate it the corpse a fifth time, I said for nine turned the corpse over to you. But they should set for incineration, saying, I've learned so much from this that I fear my early optimism was misplaced. I hadn't yet come across such a stumbling block on my road to the cure. More subjects like this would be would do a great deal in advancing my research. Observation log as forty nine seven. SCP-49 is subject. Preface. SCP-49 was provided in with the corpse of a recently deceased bovine. SCP-49 expressed mild annoyance at the provision, and O accepted it nonetheless. SCP-49 had said as desire to work on human subjects several times between this, this occasion and the early provision of an orangutan. Now there is discontent in this when they would not be provided. Observation notes. SC-49 spent several days operating on the bovine corpse, breaking and only to dine on, on a requested dinner of thin crackers, solid pork, and hard cheese. SC-49 has expressed that it does not require sustenance, but enjoys it and feels that the food helps to put in the right mind to operate. Beginning first by embalming the corpse, SC-49 was observed producing a number of long syringes from its bag, each containing a different dark viscous fluid. SC-49 described these fluids as essences of the humors, and elaborated by saying the patients may bring about out a systemic imbalance. In such a case, before true healing can be begin, one must find the humors in balance of the body, or, or the body will reject the cure. Is based on some really old science. So for nine, added to the statement by saying this is, uh, is of course elementary knowledge for the practical physician. I have thought you've learned this during your education. Yeah, my history education. Anyway, over the next few days, S three forty nine spent a considerable amount of time adjusting the organs of the bovine corpse with a number of large metal instruments. After eight days, SV-49 produced a lightning rod, which Dr. Ham exchanged for an electric cow rod attached to an, an extension cord, and tracked the corpse in several locations. This action seemingly had the effect of reanimating the bovine, which once again became ambulatory, despite the inversion of the head and reorientation of its limbs. Follow-up interview. We've watched you work for several weeks now, and honestly, I'm not sure I understand what you're doing. Can you describe your process in detail? Oh goodness, no. The process is most intensive. As I said to your assistant, the best instruction and you will find about my, my methods are here in my journals, as I have kept exhaustive records of my work there. Notably, SV, SV49's journals are not written in any known language, and attempts by linguists and the code workers to decipher them have been unsuccessful. I see. My concern, Doctor, is that we still don't understand what you're seeking to cure or how it manifests, or how turning these creatures into quasi-living mindless drones help in that effort. You do not understand the pestilence, even after all this time? Doctor, it is an unspeakable horror, one that has shown its true face many times before and will again. I find myself blessed with the wisdom and good senses needed to root it out and destroy it. But many like yourself cannot. It is a cruel judgment, I fear, to be at the mercy of a disease you cannot fully comprehend. That still doesn't answer my question. How is your cure any kind of cure at all? It is a cure. You may laugh at my efforts if you please, but do not be smart. It's a good day of scientific progress that has developed this great mercy. What you so short like or oh, short sightedly see here is a life better than any this creature could have hoped for, stricken as it was with pestilence. The creature is now clean, unable to spread the pestilence, and free from the terror it would have experienced otherwise. This is hardly a cure at all. Oh doctor, it's not even Do not jape with me, sir. You and your colleagues are like so many others, unable to look past minor setbacks to see the salvation taking place before your very eyes. 
Do you wait to remove rotten timbers until the hall collapses on top of you? No, you find them, you pull them out, you replace them with the those untouched by rot. And most of all, you do not mock the structure because it now looks different to you. It is strong, it is free of disease. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to agitate you. I'm just trying to understand. Yes, well, do mind your words in the future, Doctor. I'm a professional, but even professionals may feel a vital pride in dealing with criticism of their masterpiece. I will forgive this as an act of good faith between colleagues. Is there anything else I can help you with? No. That will be all. Another test subject on the usual schedule. You know my preference of subjects with more human anatomies. End log. Addition, attending researcher's note. As if for a does not does seem to be gen generally want to help other humans, though I has not been able to provide a concrete example of what exactly it is trying to save us all from. I have watched it, it over now over several weeks, and while the outcomes do not seem to change, SC-49 continues to claim that it is growing closer to its perfect cure. I think the and they may be more aware of the reality of these outcomes than they would like us to think. Addendum 49.3 The April 16, 2017 Incident Slightly shortly after SC-49's initial containment, Dr. Ham conducted a number of interviews with the subject regarding its unknowledge properties, and over time began to know its pleasure with its subjects and the SCP-4092 instances. This continued for a period of several months, during which SC-49 never exhibited any aggressive behaviors. On April 16, 2017, as Dr. Ham was entering SC-49's testing and were to conduct another routine interview, the enemy began to grow anxious and asked Dr. Ham if he was feeling well. Following protocol, Dr. Ham reminded SP49 that the interview was required, after which the enemy became hostile and attacked Dr. Ham, killing him. Due to a lapse in security protocol and because Dr. Ham did not activate the in chamber emergency system, Dr. Ham's corpse was not discovered until three hours later. By which point, SP49 had converted it into an instance of SP4092. In the aftermath of this incident, SV49 was interviewed by Dr. Thera Thera Aaron Sherman. Begin log. I need you to explain yourself. SCP-49, you are being directed to explain your actions, and I will remind you that failure to cooperate will result in further restrictions during your containment. My actions do not need to be explained. You killed Raymond Ham and then butchered him until he not dead. No, not dead. He is he is cured. Cured. Cured of what? The pestilence, sir. I thought you at least would realize what luck it is I detected it before. What pestilence? You keep going on and on about this pestilence, but you have not once been able to properly identify this disease. What could you possibly, what could you have possibly seen in, in him today that you had not seen him so many times before that it would be worth his life? He, the pestilence presents and progresses in unforeseeable fashions, and has a queer way of creeping into the, the unprepared end. Call it what you want, Doctor. It was mercy I did to him. He is cured. He is a vegetable! I... I would not expect you to understand. You and your... your ilk have proven time and time again to not be men of science, but men of... of emotion. You cannot appreciate the horrors I have seen, and those many millions who have succumbed to the pestilence, and been changed, who... Your cure cost Ray his life. No good, sir. I have saved it. You would allow this world to slip back into the, the despair of disease and death, ignoring that I have created a miracle and... What disease? What pestilence? He was a healthy man. He was a good doctor. 
Am I very freely to you afflicted? You are not worth this argument, sir. You are short-sighted and foolish. Dr. Ham was sick, and I... I cured him. I am the only one who can do this. My work must continue. There is so much still to learn. So much to... I've had enough of this. Consider your allowances revoked. Welcome to Containment 049. Away from Mike. We're done here. Consider what he said. Do, and others can be saved, even you. Like you do not deserve it, it might be saved. I can save them all. I can cast down this plague once and for all. I can do this. Only me. I. 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 I saved. I saved him. Dr. Ham, I. I cured him. He was sick. I know he was sick. I know he was. And I. You were all sick, but I. I could save you. I could save you all because I. I am the cure. Addendum 49.4. The following interview is an excerpt from. On the April 16, 2017 incident report. The interview was conducted by Dr. Elijah Itkin and took place three weeks after the start of the initial investigation. SCP-49, we are conducting this interview to close out our investigation of your actions taken and on April 16th that resulted in the death of a staff member. Do you have any comments to make? Only that I look forward to the day when you, and you will allow me to resume my work. I spent the last few weeks compiling my notes and constructing a new theory for how the pestilence was able to infect someone in such an insidious manner that I nearly couldn't detect it. Have you experienced any remorse for your actions, for the death of Dr. Ham? Ah yes, well, the death of a colleague is always regrettable, but in the face of the pestilence, we must be swift, Doctor, and act without, without hesitation. Dr. Sherbin noted in his report that you seem to be mournful during your initial interview. Mourn? Perhaps. I had not thought that it is lamentable that a fellow doctor became affected, but the work continues, regrettable as, as it was. Dr. Ham's death provided important insight. Living human subjects are the only way to proceed forward. I am decided. My cure is of little use on dead flesh. I have gleaned all I can from your generous supply of corpses. My desires turn towards tending into those still living and who suffer from the disease. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> oh, doctor, I wouldn't be so sure. That's concerning. Let's see what this leads to. Guessing another instant. Going home. Oh no. We're already running low on time, but I think I can do this. He felt it, the unmistakable sensation of the pestilence. It was impossibly small, but unimaginably intense, like a needle in his eye. It was faint but pungent, as though the disease had been festering undisturbed and contained for so long that its miasma has had built and wiped it out, enough for him to taste the scant particles of tainted air. He had lost track of time in his cell. Doctors had used to come and bring him specimens to study to perfect his methods. That had ended long, long ago, when the doctors had realized that they themselves were free from the disease. Still, after that, they had still checked on him, 
The voice would come out of his walls and ask him questions about what he was doing or how he was feeling. Or if he had any regrets for what he'd done. Regrets. The thought was as foolish as any he'd ever heard. Still, even that too had faded in time. The voices long ago had stopped, and he had been content to rest as in his pristine cell, away from the wretched disease, alone with his thoughts in the constant soft white light that bathed his cell. The doctor reclined himself on a comfortable mattress. Eventually, perhaps, he would have stopped thinking. But what that would have been before, or that familiar, this testful presence had returned, bringing at its mind. He found himself standing before the door to himself, studying it. It had no handle, open the way in his, his captors ordered it. But the left side had remained functional, it's the electromagnetic lock had not. His bag contained steel tools, and he did not need to understand he did, and he did not understand how to relent. It took a tremendous amount of doing, but he got open a crack, wide enough to put his weight into it. He didn't know how long it took, took to bind it enough to pass through. He didn't really register the passage of time anymore. Then he was in the hallway, well lit, and devoid of any other life, all the easier to navigate. He followed the stinging sensation of the disease, navigating the corridors as though he'd drawn up the floor plan. The lights were all functional now and all the other containment chambers were ill-sealed. At last he found it, behind an unlocked door, the lo locked metal locker. His containment cell door had been in much, made of much sterner stuff. In short order, the door lay twisted at his feet. He pulled a rectangular metal box from his locker, shoving it, setting it intently. Sigurd found a button, pressed it, and the box's lid swung open. Super cooled as a a tip of gas has mingled with the air outside the box for the first time in a long, long time. He might as well have been struck in the face. Vapor cold and ice swept it in a great cloud from the unsealed box, and he dropped it to the floor with a clatter, which echoed throughout the science facility. He sealed himself, kneeling down, lifting the face down box aside, and Gentry plucked the tiny black spot back from beneath it with his index finger and thumb. Behind his mask, he bared his teeth. And held him askew up to his eye. It wasn't in the insect. It was a sack of, of blood out of which the insect had engorged on. The upturned barrel box became his operating table. Black bag slung unceremoniously to the ground. His hands dove inside, but drawing in an empty brass syringe, a vial of thick black lit fluid, the needle plunged through the cork. Stopper, filling the glass under halfway with the vicious with the viscous pitch. The Neo withdrew, then pierced the enlarged, engorged Miskeel's body, drawing the plague blood out of within it to mix with the black mass in it in a syringe. He left the insect's dry husk on, on the box, and started to the syringe level bring the syringe level with his eye. He shook it, tapping the glass as with his finger to encourage the reaction. He considered the dead husk of the insect be so before him. It wouldn't do to let any lingering trace of the pestilence remain in the poor creature. When he was satisfied with the mixture, the needle found the insect's blood sack again, filling its tiny a body with the cold black mi mixture. The dead insect's body it twitched and jerked to life as the black fluid filled it. The body moved. The vice movement built up a tiny electric charge, enough to reboot the so-called on microfast processors in the, the bug's brain. Leslie's eyes were the first organ she remembered how to interpret. She she should be in the living room. That's where she'd gone. But oh, this wasn't in Merrill's living room. The blurred figure she saw, it couldn't be in Merrill. Who's there? She weakly asked at length. Hmm? The clarifying black blur shifted, coming more clear into a focus. Where is Merle? There is no one here but me and you. The black form shifted and came closer, until white filled Leslie's vision. She made out the icy gray eyes observing in her. He... Oh God, where am I? You are in a prison, though the wardens, it seems, have left. 
A prison? As he staggered, her to stand out on her six legs, wings slowly returning to life and beat weakly. What kind of prison? Her voice cut off as her, her GPS locator cut on. Oh god, I'm at Site 19! Is that what this place is called? Odd. After all this time that I would learn in this prison, its name from a mosquito. I need to get back tomorrow. I don't know who, where or who Merle is. I know where he lives. I can find him. I just... The way her situation began to dawn on her. She was several hundred miles from Merle's house. In the middle of Site 19, with an anomaly she knew nothing about. So at least it wasn't some monster trying to kill her. I don't know how... I don't know how I could I'd ever get I'd, 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 out of here. The doctor stood up, brought up one hat, and up to curl slowly before his eyes. I have gotten myself this far, and now that I have, I have no further reason to stay here. Then you'll help me get out of here? Leslie's wings bore, up, bore her up to land on the black glove hand. I will. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. I... Leslie gathered herself, seizing her trembling. My name is Leslie. Thank you, um, doctor. Thank you, doctor. What is this, doctor who now? The wind blasted the landscape mercilessly, as it had every day. At least today, there was no ostrange rain. Sick gray a black clouds rolled overhead. The pair had walked for nearly a week and had not yet encountered a single living person. Whew. The few animals they had seen were sick, mangy things. Leslie felt the sky weigh down on her like a dark gray iron blanket. She was having a hard time remembering what the sun looked like. She was afraid she might start to forget Merle's face. We're close, she said, to break the monotony. Just a few more miles, and then... And then... She didn't dare finish the thought. The sound of the doctor's feet crunching through the patch landscape were as barely audible over the rush of wind. And then we will all arrive, he finished for her. Tell me, Doctor, why did you come on this way with me? You could have left when we got out, on your own way. Merely because I wanted to. Thank you, Doctor. Leslie didn't know what to do when they arrived at Merle's house. The barren streets howled with the wind, but Leslie could only hear the wails of damnation. The lights were off, the door hung open. No one had been here in, in decades. They went inside. The familiar... A living room would have made her wretch if she were physically able. Merle wasn't here. How long? As he asked her to say, a certain silence in the room where she had died. The question wasn't directed at her companion. She checked the clock on her internal positioning. In system. How long? She repeated, unsure. Two, two hundred. I've been dead for 200 years? She wailed, collapsing in the palm of the doctor's hands. Then, then Marl is, is dead. So it appears. Everyone, everyone is dead, she said, seeming able to grapple all finally with the fact. Everyone, and Marl, and Marl, she repeated to herself, until the words lost meaning to her. The doctor sat on the frayed, bracket carpet, resting his back against the wall. The hand which Leslie more earned the held out before him. Yes, where will you go now? He lived here. He lived here. So now I will live here. It will be just like it was, she continued and fell to her side against the rough but cutting leather. She had no tears, but her sobs wrecked her nonetheless. Any minute, any minute Merle will come through the door. Then I will wait for him. Here with you. That was surprisingly sad. At least that last bit I read. Anyway, this has been SAP. A 49. Also known as a plague doctor. 
I did this on its own because it's one of the more popular entries, which is why it gets its own video. A lot of entries will be getting them when if they are pro if I recognize them as being popular enough to get their own video, which is a lot of the more commonly talked about ones as well. There's stuff like SV49, 53, 173, 682. All of these will be getting their own videos and will not be sharing a video with other SCPs. Anyway, this has been SV SV49. I have been Haku, and I always will be. I hope you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below with questions you might have for me. I'll see you next time.